Tropical cyclone developing in the Gulf of Mexico. The National Hurricane Center have declared the first potential tropical cyclone of this Atlantic hurricane season and it's been designated as 01L, currently located at 20 degrees north, 91.1 degrees west, which puts it just off the coast of the western part of the Yucatan Peninsula. At 7pm Central Daylight Time this June 17th, the storm or system, which is borderline uh, storm status, uh, is located in the southeastern Gulf of Mexico, not too far from Campeche, uh, moving northwest at around 9 miles per hour. It is uh, potentially a threat to the coast of uh, Mexico, northeastern Mexico, and for parts of Texas. It currently has estimated winds of around 35 miles per hour and a pressure of 1,001 millibars, and uh, tropical storm watches are now in effect. Let's take a look at those right now. A tropical storm watch for Port O'Connor, Texas, southwards to Boca de Catan, Mexico. And that watch could extend further south later on as the forecast track does take it possibly further south. It is 65 kilometers northwest of Campeche, 535 east of Veracruz, 738 from Tampico, 919 from Matamoros, and 1069 from Corpus Christi. This system could become a significant tropical storm, although we're not expecting it to become very strong, but we are expecting very high amounts of rainfall to occur from this potential tropical cyclone. Uh, the primary hazard is for flash flooding, where we could see torrential rainfall producing up to 16 inches or 400 millimeters of rainfall in parts of South Texas and Northeast Mexico. Most locations won't get as much as that, but they could still get amounts that could lead to dangerous flash flooding and landslides on higher ground. The forecast over the next few days takes the system to the northwest uh, with storm force winds extending quite a way northwards in the next 48 hours before it makes landfall somewhere in the northeastern part of Mexico we expect. But there is some wriggle room considering how broad the system is and uh, really as to where the center might form we're not really sure yet so it does open up some question marks as to what will actually happen in terms of its track. Now 35 mile per hour winds, borderline tropical storm status or tropical storm force winds, you could argue either way for it, it doesn't make too much difference at this point. It is expected to peak according to the National Hurricane Center with winds of 45 miles per hour uh, before it makes its landfall in Mexico. Interestingly they're calling for a slightly later landfall than what we're forecasting as well. They think it will happen late on Wednesday night. There is the National Hurricane Center forecast right now with that tropical storm watch extending pretty much north of the landfall site on that forecast up to Port O'Connor, Texas. And the system moving inland afterwards uh, could stay as a tropical storm for a little bit longer into Thursday before weakening to a depression by Friday. Already they're showing a sizable tropical storm force wind on the northeastern side and this is the GFS model for the next seven days showing that very broad uh, stretched system moving on towards Mexico and then a second system actually forming towards the end of this seven day period so we're talking early next week here for a potential second cyclone but let's just get on to this one first of all you can see those storm force winds pushing up into Texas there I think that's a GFS model is calling for a landfall in Texas on that run there which is interesting to say the least other models not so confident in that or keeping it very broad so with that impact you can see there on the expected radar the simulated radar there's lots of red moving into southern texas which surely will be uh, showing up some very high rainfall totals if that was to take place gfs has been pretty confident on that in the last uh, 24 hours of runs and there it is again showing the circulation struggles throughout but you can see it just about shaping off and moving off towards the west the monterey area of mexico should get some significant amounts of rainfall as well particularly off to its south 
Uh, I think the next graphic is the precipitation chart. Yes, here it is. So over the next uh, seven days, we're expecting significant amounts of rainfall, first from this system, and then maybe from a second system that will be forming behind it that we looked at on that wind, wind graphic. That's responsible for bringing those reds to the south of Mexico there as well, to the south of the Gulf, uh, producing some very high amounts in the Veracruz region. But looking at Texas there, getting up towards 13, 14 inches, just southeast of Monterey, 10 inches there. That's 200. 50 millimeters and combined with a potential second system up to 27 inches over parts of Veracruz, Mexico and 14 inches on the eastern part of the Yucatan. Uh, so really significant amounts of rainfall over that seven day period. I've decided to show us a close up of South Texas as well showing where exactly the GFS forecasts uh, the highest amounts of rainfall and you can see it's in a little triangle in between San Antonio, Victoria and Corpus Christi where we're expecting maximum rain amounts of up to 13 inches. Now this is just if the GFS forecast is right. Uh, it could end up being displaced a little bit further south, it could end up being the Brownsville area that gets more of that rainfall. Uh, but it is a, a close run thing and obviously not too far in the future so uh, certainly we're looking out for very high amounts of rain anywhere in southern Texas. Looking at sea surface temperatures ahead of this potential system they're pretty good around 28 to 30 degrees Celsius generally 28 to 29 but a few spots could be pushing up towards 31 degrees along the sea surface um, and a little bit of energy below the sea surface as well with oceanic heat content into the moderate range in one or two small spots in the western uh, gulf. So here's the satellite imagery of it right now and it really is a mess it has to be said there's quite a few areas that look like they could be potentially uh, forming potential circulations uh, but in the middle of it all is where we've put the system right now National Hurricane Center went further to the left uh, which could be true as well and the rapid scan floater certainly looks a little bit more convincing from that perspective on these latest images here uh, with that potential circulation starting to develop further west what would that mean well it would probably mean that it'll end up moving a little bit further towards the west but possibly further north quite uh, unexpectedly as well if it does end up forming further west there um, and that would take it further away from texas in the long run of course if the center of circulation ends up forming from that road rotation over the Yucatan Peninsula still, then that could lead to a system moving further northwestwards and possibly a storm tracking closer to Port O'Connor which is on the edge of that tropical storm watch. Uh, more visible imagery here of the system which is looking pretty decent, of course convection is all over the place, uh, rotation obviously needs to improve uh, but we are at least half the way there to calling a tropical cyclone and the start of Atlantic hurricane season. I think at this point it probably will get there, although it is going to be very broad and some people might call it messy.